terms. We will focus on adding and subtracting rational numbers. This is part of the standard adding and subtracting rational numbers in real world problems. This is a seventh grade standard. Let's start with adding and subtracting keywords. So usually when you read a word problem, there are words that will give you a hint or an idea that you are going to add them. And these are some of those uh, examples. Sum, ascend, gave, plus, deposit, raise, received, increase, more, combine. There's still more, uh, more words in there, but these are the most common. In subtracting, we have difference, descend, taken away, minus, withdraw, lower, spent, decrease, less, fewer. Again, there's more words out there that are um, being used for subtraction, but these are the most common. So let's start with the steps. It is always um, best to have a system or a strategy in solving word problems. I have here three major steps. First, you need to understand. You read the problem and you list down the important information that will help you solve the problem. Determine what it is really asking and decide which operations to use. Next, when you start solving, you have to show your work and label your answer with the correct units. You have to make sure that you understand the problem first before you start solving and uh, you know what you're doing. And the third part is look back. Is the answer logical? Does it make sense? Do I have the right sign um, for, the, for my answer? Because we're talking about integers here. So let's start with our first example. Michelle went on a walk that took her up 300 meters above sea level. Then he descended 425 meters, took a break, and then ascended 625 meters. What was Michelle's final elevation in relation to sea level? So first is to list down what are the given information. What do we know about the problem? So here are the things that we are, we should take down notes. First, she went up 300 meters. The word up indicates a positive number, so therefore that is plus 300. Then, she descended 425. The word descend pertains or indicates a subtraction, so that means that is a negative number. Negative 425. Then he ascends 625 um, above the sea level. 625 meters above the sea level. So since the word ascends indicates a positive sign or an, 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 it's an addition word, then that means it is positive. Now that we know what are the given information, let's put it together. Let's solve them. And let's label our answer correctly. It will be easy if we will uh, make a mathematical expression in order for us to um, solve this one easily. First is three hundred dollars, uh, three hundred meters. So we lay it down there, and then a negative four hundred twenty-five means minus four hundred twenty-five, and then plus six hundred twenty-five. So. 300 minus 425 is 125, and then we add the 625, that will give us positive 500 feet, no, it's not feet, it should be meters above sea level. Now, question, look back. Does it make sense? Do you think it is really positive? Do you think it's really 500 meters above sea level? If you look at the given she ascended or she goes up more than going down so it makes sense because even the 625 going up and the 425 going down is way even more what about if you add 300 more so it makes sense let's proceed to our second example 
Our second example is Tony looked at his checking account uh, account statement and it showed that he deposited $48 but spent $11.28 at the gas station, $4.96 at Carl's Jr., and $13.43 at Fry's. He wants to pick up some grip tape for his skateboard, which will cost $22.13. Does Tony have enough in his checking account? Okay, let's try to understand the problem. The question is asking if he will buy the grip tape, does he have enough money left? So let's skip this one, this given first, and let's set that aside for later. Now, so let's take a list of all the given information. What are the things that we know? So first, he deposited $48. So that's positive. Then he spent $11.28. So that's a negative number. And then he spent another $4.96. Then he spent another $13.43. Does he have enough money? If he has, then he will spend another, he has to spend another $22.13. So that's the question there. Now, let's put it together. What if we are going, at first he has positive $48. What if we're going to put together all the negative numbers? Remember, same signs add. If you will add all ne both negative numbers, it will add up. Just simply add all the numbers. So let's try that one. Let's add all the negative numbers. The negative 11, the negative 13, the negative 4. 0.49 so uh, considering the sense so let's make sure that the place values are lined up now if we add all of them together we will come up with a twenty nine dollars and twenty cents so since these are all negative numbers this is also a negative number so we will subtract that one from the 48 the positive 48 and that will give us an answer of eighteen dollars and eighty cents now Tony does not have enough for the grip tape because the grip tape costs $22.13. Therefore, he doesn't have enough money to buy the grip tape. Does it make sense? Let's look back. Mm, I think because he has spent a lot. He has spent more, um, uh, I mean, three times already, and he only has $48. And if you will look at $22 for the grip tape, and he already has spent around 13 and 4 and so he doesn't really have enough. So I would be sure, I am so convinced that my answer is correct. And although it's positive, I know it's positive, but it's not enough to buy the grip tape. So let's proceed to our third problem. In Wisconsin, the morning temperature in winter was negative $15, 15 degrees Fahrenheit. By mid-afternoon, the temperature had decreased by 5 and one-third degrees. What was the final temperature? So what do we know? We know that in the first, um, in the morning, it's already negative 15. So that is negative 15 in there. And it decreased. The word decrease indicates a negative number. So it's minus one, five dollar, uh, I mean five and one third degrees Fahrenheit. If we will put it together, then that is a negative 15 minus negative five and one third. Both are negative, therefore, same signs add. Negative 15 plus negative five and one third is equal to negative 20 and one third degrees Fahrenheit. Does it make sense? I think so, because if in the morning, it's already cold. It's already negative degrees Fahrenheit. And if the temperature decreases, so it would it should be way even more colder. Because when you say the temperature decrease, it will go down. So from negative 15, it should go down to a negative 20 and 130 degrees Fahrenheit if it decreases that much. So it makes sense. That is, I'm convinced that my answer is correct. Let's move on to the fourth example. Our fourth example is 
Jenna has trouble keeping track of her money. Her dad gave her $5.25 for lunch, but she lost $1.50. The next day, he gave her $3.75 for lunch, but she lost the $2. Finally, Jenna got $11.25 for lunch, but she lost $8.50. How much money did dad gave, give her and how much did Jenna lose? I, I think Jenna is really having trouble keeping track of her money. I don't know where it, it goes. But whatever is that, let's try to solve this problem. It may be um, a real world, um, real world problem. It might happen to someone already. So let's look at the initial given. Her dad gave her $5.25. So that's positive. She lost $1.50. So that's negative. And then his dad, her dad gave her another $3.75. That's positive. And then she lost another $2. That's negative. And then her dad gave her another $11.25. That's positive. Uh, but she lost negative uh, $8.50. So that's a negative number. So let's put it together. I'll find it easier in this way. What about if we will add together all the money that she received? From her dad and all the money that she lost so that we will have a track as to how much money does her dad gave her all together and how much money does she lost so it also makes sense that if you, that you can combine all the negative numbers together and you can combine all the positive numbers together so if you will add all the positive numbers together make sure that all the um, place values lined up and then it will give you a total of $20.25. That's the total money that she received in three days. Now, the total money that she lost, remember that even if they're all negative, but same signs add. So we will treat them as positive numbers. In total, her money that is lost is $12. And, uh, I know, that's $12. So exactly $12 she lost that for three days. And that indicates a negative number. So, does it make sense? Yes, I think so because she received more money than what she lost. So, therefore, I am convinced that the answer is correct. So, let's have the fifth example. Kaylee has been working all summer and is getting ready to go back to school. She deposited $120 into her account and spent $10 on a necklace. She deposited another $50.45 and spends $49.99 on new shoes. How much money does she have left? So first, she deposited $120. That means a positive number in her account. Then, she spent $10. That's a negative number in her account. Then, she deposited another $50.45. That's another positive. And another... $49 spent on a necklace, which is, I mean, not a necklace, but it's a brand new shoes, um, which is $49.19, so that's a negative. So let's put together all the positive numbers that will give us a total of $170.45 um, deposit, total deposit on her account. So that's positive $170.45. And let's look at the money that she spent all together. So that is $49.99 and $10. So that is a total of $59.99. So since this is the spent, the money that is being spent, that indicates a negative number. So that should be negative $55.99 and that should be a positive $170.45. So if you will subtract this $59.99 from $170.45, that will give you a one hundred ten dollars and forty six cents. That is the money left in her in her account. Does it make sense? Yes, this makes sense because she has way deposited much much more money than the money that she spent on stuff that she she bought, right? So this is the end of our lesson for today, and um, thank you for watching and hope you enjoy my lesson. Have a good day.